Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. I'm Mark. Unfortunately, Pixie's out on assignment testing blankets for superior sleeping, so she won't be able to make it today, but she will be back next week. And what do we want to talk about? Well, I read an interesting article from Linux.com by Jack Wallen. Just want to give acknowledgement to Jack's article here and get your take on what you think of Jack's favorite distributions and what he thinks are actually best for 2017. So let's get started. First of all, Jack says that Parrot Linux is one of the best distros uh, for sysadmins. So Parrot comes with many different tools that are available that you can use for networking, intrusion detection, administration, cryptography, cloud, anonymity, digital forensics, you name it. My question is, and I have not used this particular distro, I'm wondering how it compares to Kali Linux or Tails. And if anybody's used Tails or Kali or Parrot to compare the three. This is definitely one of the ones I'm going to download. Now I'm familiar with Kali Linux, but I do want to see if there's any other tools in this particular distribution that makes it better. It's hit 57 on DistroWatch, and he does think that it should make a significant leap towards the end of the year, so we shall see. And best lightweight distribution, LXLE, I believe is what you call it. This particular distribution, Wallen is convinced, is going to become the go-to lightweight distribution of choice. Now, it's been a long time since I've checked out the lightweight distributions. It's been five years. The ones I was using back in the day were Puppy Linux and Damn Small Linux DSL. And this one uses the LXDE window manager and it looks like it comes with some pretty cool tools that make administration really easy. So he's also written an article about LXLE if you're interested in it. And it's currently number 16 on DistroWatch. So this is one that I am definitely going to take a look at in a future review, so hang around and you'll see it coming. Now, here's one that I'm very interested in checking out, Elementary OS. My son's used it quite a bit, and um, he actually works here for the state doing information technology, so it's something that I'm really interesting and interested in. According to Jack, he says he's biased, but uh, elementary OS Loki is basically the best desktop distribution for 2017, and he really thinks it's going to beat out Linux Mint. Uh, curious about you Linux Mint users if you checked out elementary and what you think of it. It's currently at number six, but Mint, of course, is number one, so it really doesn't surprise me. Ubuntu is nice, or Ubuntu, however you would like to say it. I'm sorry, I can't help but laugh. Everybody gets all up in arms if you don't pronounce these Linux distributions correctly. Uh, anyway, uh, the Linux Ubuntu is nice. Personally, I would go back to Debian. I wouldn't use Ubuntu. I would probably use Debian. According to Jack, he's saying that Elementary is a really good distribution, and he thinks it might even be poised to dethrone Mint. I would be surprised if that occurs. One of the problems with it is it does have a UI that's similar to Mac OS, and I'm finding that many people have opinions about any distribution that has any similarity to Mac OS and what I usually see is it's the Mac OS users coming out of the woodwork saying how silly it is for any Linux distribution to emulate Mac OS. I actually find that interesting and here's why. What's the choices? One, we can innovate something that's completely different. Two, we can emulate the Windows operating system. Or three, we can emulate Mac OS. Granted, the installed base of operating systems is largely Windows, but personally, if I were to have to choose between Windows and Mac OS, at this point, I would definitely go with Mac OS because I feel like it's much easier to use. So I would definitely gravitate to a distro that is similar to Mac OS, and if that's the case, I'm not really sure how much more similar 
elementary is, but this is going to be the first one that I'm going to check out prior to any other distributions this year. Personally, I think GNOME does a really good job of emulating macOS, so I'm not sure how much more it can do. And GNOME received criticism when they went from 3 to 4, and it was primarily the Windows users who really didn't like the new interface. And I will confess, uh, when it came out, GNOME 3, a few years back, it was very difficult for me to use it. I, I did not like it, and I decided at that point I would go with KDE. And I use both, and since I've become a Mac user, more so than a Windows user as my backup system compared to Linux, which I use most of the time, I've found that I really do like uh, the UI styling, the the way the interface works, how you get to files. Yes, I do have some pet peeves, but overall I would say I have less pet peeves with Mac OS than I do with Windows 10. I get along with any operating system and I like to use all of them, but I would say that if elementary OS really does emulate better Mac OS and it's clean and neat and the functionality is there, I could see gravitating to elementary OS in the future as my desktop. Uh, Gen 2 Linux, for those with something to prove, I kind of got a chuckle out of that. So if you really, really know your Linux, uh, the author is suggesting that Gen 2 would be the go-to to do that. I know most of my viewers say if you're going to go for uh, totally roll your own Linux, build it the way you want it, maintain it the way you want it, it would be Arch. And it makes some sense to me. My experience with Arch, I had a lot of fun working with the distro and learning about it. The only problem with me for Arch is I think it takes a little bit more effort um, to manage the operating system in the sense of keeping the updates, installing packages, and I only say that as my opinion because I come from different distributions of Linux, mainly the Fedora base. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Arch. I'm just saying for me, I really, I'm used to uh, the DNF package manager and everything that's built into Fedora. So it would definitely be a change for me to go to Arch. But I'm thinking I'm going to check out Gen 2 and do a video on that in the future as well. But number one for me so far is elementary. Uh, if you're interested in IoT, which I do have a router that I'm interested in putting an OS on, he suggests Snappy Ubuntu Core. I'm not sure if I'll use this one or a different oh, uh, distribution. I guess we'll see. So I really don't have a whole lot of IoT devices that I need to concern myself with. Best non-enterprise server distribution, I don't think this is a surprise for anybody. CentOS, stable, reliable, and if you're going to run a server, this would be the go-to. What I do get a chuckle out of is the fact that he's showing the GUI, and every server I've ever ran, I don't have the GUI. Incidentally, speaking of GUIs, I'm teaching a Linux class this quarter, and I'm really emphasizing the command line as opposed to the graphical interface for servers. And I wondered what you thought about that. If you were a student and you were just beginning to learn about Linux, would you say it would be more important to understand the command line and its underpinnings? Or should there be more work with the GUI? Now, I do have to follow the curriculum to some extent, but I do have latitude so I can make some changes as long as the course objectives are still met. The course objectives are heavier in the command line elements, which makes sense to me. The problem I have with the GUI elements is it's really hard to say what the GUI is going to look like for each separate distribution. So if they were to learn one particular distribution, I feel like that it, with the graphical interface, it really might not carry over, especially not just the fact that distributions change, but the graphical it, the graphical interface changes for every iteration of any distribution. But anyway, I'm curious to hear what you think. What would you like as a student who's just getting introduced to Linux? Again, best enterprise server 
Red Hat Enterprise. Yeah, I would agree. And honestly, over the years, the go-to server that I've used to provision was CentOS. I did use Red Hat for a database server 64-bit uh, because I did want all the support and not have any issues whatsoever. I like the web interface, the enterprise web interface, and the ability to manage all my servers remotely. I don't even have to log into the server and I can run updates from there. I can schedule them. It's really quite nice, I do have to admit. Very refined for the price. Also, uh, I don't know how many people are doing work with Red Hat, but if you do work as a nonprofit and you do buy the services, and management for Red Hat, it is very inexpensive uh, for a nonprofit. So I got a really good deal for that. So the bottom line is the author says the choice is yours, but I do like articles like this because it opens my mind to new ideas. Elementary OS, um, I've heard it talked about. I'm definitely thinking that's something I need to take a look at. At some point, I should install Gentoo Linux just to have a look at it and see what it's all about. I definitely would do elementary OS, and I'm interested in LXLE. So those two are definitely on my uh, plate as something I'm going to do a review of. And Parrot Linux. So of those three, which one would you be most interested in hearing about? As always, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And... Leave a comment. We've talked about a lot of different things that I'm asking you about, so I understand if you only comment on one or two of them. I always like to read your comments. Great stuff, and I really appreciate your support. I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets.